Well, welcome to the March 7th public meeting of the Town of Conception Bay South Council. Uh, we're going to start things off, as always, with the land acknowledgement. The Town of Conception Bay South would like to respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We also respectfully acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Innu of Natasinan, the Inuit of Nunatsiavut, and the Inuit of Nunatuavut. We strive for respectful partnerships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. Okay, next up, adoption of the agenda, agendas and minutes, adoption of the meeting agenda for this evening, March 7th, moved by Councillor Barrett, seconded by Councillor Hillier. All in favor? Contrary minded. Adoption of the meeting minutes from February 21st. Move by Councillor Tilly, seconded by Councillor Moores. All in favor? Contrary minded. Carried. And business arising from previous minutes uh, will be dealt with at this meeting and meetings going forward. And this evening, visitors' presentations and petitions. And this evening, we have a proclamation from Deputy Mayor Andrea Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. It's my honor to bring forward a proclamation for International Women's Day. Whereas International Women's Day is celebrated globally on March 8th, with the aim of taking the time to reflect on the contributions women have made and continue to make to their communities and countries, better places in which to, to live, work, and grow. And whereas International Women's Day is a time to uphold women's achievements, recognize challenges, focus greater attention on women's right, rights and gender equality, encourage and mobilize all people to do their part to bring about positive change. And whereas International Women's Day is a time to envision a world where each woman and girl can exercise her choices, such as participating in politics, getting an education, having an income, and living in societies free from violence and discrimination. Whereas the theme of International Women's Day 2023 is to embrace equi equity, to get the world talking about why equal opportunities aren't enough. People start from different places, so true inclusion and belonging require equitable action. For International's Women, International Women's Day and beyond, let's all fully embrace equality. Therefore, I, Andrea Goss, Deputy Mayor of the Town of Conception Bay South, do hereby proclaim March 8th, 2023, to be International Women's Day in the Town of Conception Bay South. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Doss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Okay, uh, new business. Uh, this evening we'll start with uh, Councillor Josh Barrett. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so tonight I want to take a few moments and speak on something perhaps Councillor Butler might mention a bit later, but we were recently invited to a Seniors Advisory Committee, which Councillor Butler is our council rep, and I understand Councillor Hardy was before. And honestly, I just want to take a few moments because I was honestly blown away by the amount of work that you and your colleagues are doing with that committee. Uh, we were walked through this lovely uh, age-friendly uh, objectives that the committee has and they're working on over the next number of years. And I just want to provide a bit of a highlight reel. Some things that I thought, I mean, it's all super important, but certainly big things that stood out to me that you and your committee are working on. Uh, accessible public buildings. And so that's not necessarily just the legislative requirements, but ensuring there's appropriate seating and benches and railing. Accessible trailway, uh, ensuring there's actually safe parking areas for access points for the trailway. Ensuring roadside signage is visible, um, removing trees and other obstructions that impede view. And I know we had a great conversation about the potential for a, um, similar to our reporting platform like report a pothole, but maybe expanding it to reporting a road safety concern. So it could be um, there's a tree branch impeding the view of a stop sign or those types of things. 
a lot of work on engaging and expanding volunteers. We are recently advocating and, and promoting our, our volunteer registry. Addressing lack of affordable housing options. We know this is obviously a big pinch for everybody in the town, and uh, it's great to see that is on the priority list for, for seniors, uh, whether it's rezoning land or approving more multi-use properties. And the last one I wanted to mention is address the lack of medical care options in Conception Bay South. And so that could be doctor offices, blood clinics, walk-in clinics, those types of things. And so I could go on, but I'll, I'll par park it there. Um, all of which to say, um, despite these things being discussed at a seniors advisory committee table, it's clear to me that all of these things, all of these priorities benefit the town as a whole. I mean, these are great community investments that will build the quality of life for, for all residents. And um, not only are these priorities, but if you go through, as they work through this document, they have very tangible action plans that they're hoping to move forward to actually make these things reality. So I uh, just want to thank you again, Councillor Butler, for, for the invitation for and and for the meeting and, and all the work the Senior Advisory Committee is doing. And um, yeah, I, I truly believe helping seniors positively impacts our entire community. So thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Yeah, the uh, meeting was very impressive and the uh, and the uh, the lineup of work that they've set out for themselves and Councillor Butler and uh, and the committee uh, uh, you got a, a long list there, but they're all things that will benefit all of us and it's uh, fantastic to see this happening. Councillor Hardy. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, just a couple of things to uh, talk about this evening. Um, first off, just want to do a huge shout out to the recreation team again for putting off another amazing uh, senior social. Um, last Tuesday, they were able to have their Valentine social. It was a little bit delayed due to the weather. Um, so again, sold out, lots of music going, uh, friends uh, out having a good dance, the food was fabulous. It's just a really good atmosphere every time you have those senior socials. So I uh, certainly enjoy my time there uh, serving the seniors and having a few chuckles along the way. Um, as Deputy Mayor said uh, earlier, it is International Women's Day tomorrow. Uh, so just want to encourage all the women, girls, any community groups to get out tomorrow evening um, at the library from 6.30 to 8. And I know uh, Councillor Morris will likely have some more information on that. But in light of it being International Women's Day tomorrow, I just want to highlight that um, Queen Elizabeth High School is offering a female baseball day on April 1st uh, from 11 o'clock to 1 a.m. Um, it's a time where you can go out and you're going to be able to meet Jada Lee, which um, at the age of 16, she was the first female to compete in the men's baseball in the Canada Summer Games. So I just think it's very um, timely that we can certainly put that uh, plug out there for any uh, females that want to learn a little bit more about baseball. And they can just um, email the cbsbaseball.ca group. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Thank you, Councillor Hardy. Councillor Morris. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, and yes, I did want to mention our International Women's Day celebration we'll be having tomorrow night. Um, as some of you may know, we had one last year and it was virtual, so we're very excited this year to be doing it in person at the new CBS Public Library. Uh, we have a great little event planned. We have a guest speaker panelists from our community. Um, we're going to do some Q&A. We have some refreshments and uh, we have lots registered already and there is no charge for this event. It's free for all ages. So we just would ask people to register um, on Eventbrite through the town's website just so we have an idea of how many to expect. So again, it's tomorrow night from 6.30 to 8, and we hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Yeah, fantastic event and a, and a great new location. So it gives people a chance to come out and see the library as well. But uh, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Councillor Connors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things that I, I got. Uh, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to make the International Women's Day event tomorrow night because the two things I want to talk about is the CB Blues and the CBR Junior Renegades. Both of them are in the playoffs, and both of them are up two to nothing in the semifinals. Or well, on the sorry, the Renegade, the Junior Renegades, only in the quarterfinals. But they are they won't go quite well, and they are playing down Southern Shore tomorrow night. So that's where I'm heading to. Game starts seven o'clock, and I just want to put a shout out to. Get as many fans as we can because they're back here again. The senior Blues are back here again Sunday night at uh, at eight, and the Junior Renegades are playing on the plane to Thursday night out in the Golds and back here on Saturday night 
uh, for home game on Saturday night. So just a shout out to those two teams that are doing quite well in the, in the playoffs so far. Thank you, Councillor Connors. Both the uh, Renegades, the Junior Renegades and, and the Blues are leading their series, I understand. So next couple of games, they can wrap those up, hopefully, and move on. Um, Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, first off, as Councillor Barrett had mentioned, uh, we did have the Seniors Advisory Committee meeting, and I was going to talk about this at the end, but seeing as we've already done this, we might, I might as well just add a few things. I was delighted to have some councillors in the room, and, and I know the busy schedules was very much appreciated. And I know that the members were very, very grateful that you did attend, because I know many times they've asked me, you know, like wanting to meet the councillors, and it was great that you were able to be there. Uh, they're a great group of people. They they have they're very open minded, you know, and, and they have lots of great ideas, and they don't mind telling you what they really really want to tell you. So it's been great, and I'm looking forward to the next meeting. So I won't do that at the end of the meeting now. <laughs> um, with the renegades, I just wanted to do a shout out to Eric Schibler, who was an uh, honorary renegade uh, on what, what did he call it? He was called an honorary renegade, right? I'm not too sure on that now. I should be better on that one. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Eric. I've already congratulated him anyway. I was speaking with him. So that's wonderful and a great honor for him. The Seniors Valentine's Dance, uh, Councillor Hardy already mentioned. Uh, myself and Councillor Hardy and uh, Deputy Mayor Andrew were there. And uh, we were busy uh, serving and chatting and it's a great way to see all, all of the residents, you know, especially when you're up to serving, because as, as they walk by, you're, you say hi to all of them, you know, and, and they always have something to say back to you, and, and it's wonderful to see them all. So I just look forward to these events so much and so disappointed I'm going to miss the St. Patrick's Day one as I have to travel to visit my mom. And International Women's Day, uh, Councillor Moores has already mentioned, so looking forward to tomorrow evening uh, event here at the library. And let me see, I got so much stuff. A oh, big shout out to Maddox Clover for winning a gold medal at the uh, Canada Winter Games. Uh, congrats to Maddox. And uh, there'll be more on that at the next council meeting. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Hillier. Mr. Worship, just uh, take a moment to, again, to recognize tomorrow is International Women's Day. And I guess I'd like to thank and congratulate the people around the table who've taken a leadership role here in town and uh, in promoting tomorrow uh, as well. And Your Worship, uh, the other piece I have, um, just want to, I guess, recognize the passing of one of our, our well-known residents uh, on February 25th at the age of 92. Uh, Mr. Robert Chater or Bob Chater or Bobby Chater, some may have known. And I'll just read from, uh, from his obituary. It says, Dad was a long-term member of the Society of United Fishermen. He was a charming storyteller and proud family man. He worked for over 40 years with Canadian National Railway, but his true work passion was tending his farm on Fowler's Road. And uh, the saying that many of us have heard one is nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. And many of us would have known Mr. Chater because we would have bought our fall vegetables from him off the back of his truck or off, off his wheelbarrow at the top of Fowler's Road up until just a few years ago when he gave up uh, tending his garden. And uh, the thing about it was you paid for your vegetables, but you didn't get away without a story as well. So I just want to pass uh, Council's condolences on to uh, the Chater family. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. Councillor Tilly. Thank you, Worship. Uh, recently, I think it was last week in Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador, um, um, handed out some awards at their Tourism Awards Gala. And I'd like to uh, point out uh, Joy Cronin. She's a CBS representative and she's an uh, employee at the Capitol Hotel. Uh, she became the first recipient of the Tourism Employee Award of Excellence. This award recognizes a frontline tourism employee who has dem demonstrated exemplary work performance, thereby enhancing business or customer satisfaction. So congratulations to Joy on, on, that, uh, on that award. As well, Your Worship, uh, um, we are aware now that our community park is, is going in full swing. Uh, I've received countless uh, emails, uh, phone calls, texts from, from residents that they are, they are so happy with uh, the final product that we, we have down there. So when... Uh, it's it's great to see so many people out and enjoying the uh, the inclusive park. So uh, kudos to to everyone for for making it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tilly, Deputy Mayor Goss. 
Thank you, Mayor Vance. Uh, there's a lot of good things going on in the community, a lot of good stories, as uh, um, most many of my uh, fellow counselors have already made mention of. Um, they've actually touched on most everything I was going to mention, but I'm just going to add, I want to take this opportunity with International Women's Day being tomorrow, I want to take the opportunity to thank our, uh, our senior staff here at the town. We have uh, four of our seven senior management staff are women. So they, they lead this town every day, and I want to thank them. And around our council table, we have four of nine counselors who are also women. So uh, we really are embracing equity here in Conception Bay South. So there's lots of great things going on tomorrow. As you know, we're having our event at the CBS Library tomorrow evening. Um, the Conception Bay Area Chamber of Commerce is having an event tomorrow to uh, celebrate International Women's Day. And it's a, it's a, a luncheon and uh, some sessions with a panel of speakers from 10 till 2. And uh, the lunch is actually going to be, uh, it's procured by uh, Concept Nutrition, a business here in the town, uh, Amanda Janes. And uh, if you didn't get a ticket, it's sold out. So, uh, but many of us are attending and we're looking forward to it and uh, having, a, you know, that opportunity to network. So uh, I just want to make mention to uh, the seniors Valentine event last uh, Tuesday was uh, a real feel good uh, event. Um, they had a full house over 200 seniors, uh, lots of good food, lots of good stories and networking and uh, socialization. And uh, I don't often get to the seniors events, but I, uh, I'm certainly going to try to get to more of them because uh, it was you walk away and you say, oh, that's, that was a great, that was a great time. Certainly wonderful to be a part of it. And I commend our recreation staff that do an awesome job on bringing these events together. And uh, I want to thank the volunteers. We had some Lions Club that volunteered there. And uh, yeah, so lots of good things in the community. That's it for me. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Goss. Um, I'll start off by saying uh, I want to yes I want to thank uh, the folks in this room uh, that uh, uh, came together to create the second annual Women's International Women's Day event uh, tomorrow at the new library, uh, and and yes uh, a thank you and a recognition to our senior staff. Uh, one of the things that's absolutely true about Conception Bay South and I suppose other places as well is that uh, women are in leadership roles uh, in the front lines and behind the scenes. Uh, just about everywhere in our community. And uh, it's fantastic that uh, more and more are being recognized for the efforts that they're making in our community, the difference that they're making, not only in their own uh, lives and their own worlds, but in the, all of our worlds and all of our, all of our lives. And it's fantastic uh, to see. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'll say this, that there's, there's no surprise or wonder to me that the four women we have on our council here are leaders in our community aside from this and have given back and uh, done so much in so many different areas, whether it's sports and recreation and uh, committees and other groups and supporting our community for years and years now. It's no surprise they're around this table and thank you to the work that you've done over the years and uh, for bringing this event together for us. Um, I want to recognize uh, some other folks uh, now as well, and I know that most of this has been spoken about before, but uh, the uh, Canada Games wrapped up uh, Sunday in Prince Edward Island and Conception Bay South sent 16 athletes to those games and they represented us in squash and hockey and curling, gymnastics and figure skating. And uh, congratulations to all of them. I hope they had a, a, uh, a time that they'll remember for all their lives and bring those experiences and that that uh, knowledge and, uh, and uh, back to their own clubs and their own sports here that will help make our clubs and our sports here better and stronger uh, going forward. And I see one uh, proud mom in the back here smiling at me as I'm saying this. So I'm sure that that was absolutely true for you. And I'll recognize Carter Lake uh, along with other uh, members of that team that went over there. And uh, uh, in squash, we had Laura Stroud, Joel Stroud, Jonah DePasquier, Carter, Ben Smith. And uh, I believe Sophie Talk was there as well for that group in hockey. Jack Bartlett, Will Carroll, Declan Kennedy, Mason Strong, Molly Gill, and Haley Ryan. In curling, Callie Lake, 
gymnastics, William Osmond, and in figure skating, Jonathan Flynn, and uh, one of only two gold medalists in this province uh, this year, uh, a great young man, Maddox Glober, who uh, won gold medal in uh, figure skating, uh, Special Olympics level two, and uh, also named the flag bearer for Team NL for the closing ceremonies. What a proud moment for him, for his family, and I can tell you for his community as well. So fantastic to see that. And I want to mention somebody else. He's not from Conception Bay South. He's from Taurus Golf. But he trains in Conception Bay South Boxing Club. And that's Mike Design, who won a bronze medal as well. So uh, from Conception Bay South, I'm claiming half of the medals that Newfoundland and Labrador won at these games uh, are from here. So congratulations to them. And I just want to say that... Uh, uh, we're planning to have them all. Hopefully they'll be available in the council chambers on the 21st uh, to recognize them and the and the efforts that they made. And of course, looking forward to seeing that uh, young man from Villanova Junior High, 13 years old with a gold medal around his neck. That'll be uh, great, uh, great for all of us here to see that as well. Um, just on the uh, the seniors note, just once again, uh, I, I when I was there and, and, and heard all the wonderful things that they were up to, it, it occurred to me that matching them up with our youth advisory council uh, will probably be something that I'd say the committee will be looking at very soon, because I'd say that between the two of them together, they could come up with lots of great things to do and got lots of great you know, ideas for improvements and things that we should be working on as a council to support them. So looking forward to that. And uh, also, um, I know everybody was talking about the uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, I missed it as well. But the uh, St. Patrick's Day one is coming up, I think, in nine days, 16th, uh, I believe. So uh, I'm, I'm, I dug up my green tie today, so I'm getting ready for that one. And um, I know there's a couple other things, the, the hockey. Yeah, I just want to say this, and I know that Councillor Butler mentioned it, but on uh, last weekend, um, Eric Schibler. Uh, was named the ninth honorary renegade, um, and uh, and this honor has gone to some uh, uh, very uh, uh, um, I guess Im I would say important, but certainly people who have made important contributions to our community, uh, to recreation and and other facets of life here in Conception Bay South over the years, and it was uh, it was great to be there and to be able to uh, congratulate Eric and say a few words on behalf of the town uh, during that ceremony held by the uh, Junior Renegades, and it was uh, certainly a well deserved recognition for Eric Schibler and uh, uh, for those of you who uh, aren't quite familiar with Eric, uh, uh, he, he's with Tim Hortons and of course Tim Hortons are a, a great community partner here in our town. Uh, you know, they're involved in uh, so many of their events and uh, always supporting the town and of course Eric uh, was uh, uh, chair of our uh, our summer games in 2016 as well. So he's uh, given back on so many levels. It was great to see them name him as the ninth honorary renegade. And uh, as well, um, last Friday, the uh, Senior Blues uh, gave me the prestigious honor of being able to uh, drop the ceremonial puck to kick off their playoffs. And I know that night uh, we were all wondering uh, how they would make out because they, they, uh, they, I think they went down seven to three in the first game. And we thought, well, Things aren't looking so good, but they came back out in Clarenville, won the series, and they're now leading the Southern Shore and getting ready to move on to another series. So congratulations uh, to them as well. And uh, just another note, um, uh, something I think we probably all got in our mailboxes today, but the artists of Studio 5 uh, have a show this weekend down at Worsley Park. Um, and I think it's from 10 to 5 or... 11 to 5, 11 to 5 down there. And the local talent involved in this is incredible. And the artwork is always, always amazing. So if you're out and around, you want to see some fantastic artwork and maybe pick up some pieces for your own home uh, for gifts or what have you, that Worsley Park uh, this weekend, the Studio 5 artists are presenting. And it's a, it's always a uh, a fun event and a, and a great event to, to be at. Um, that is it for me. So let's get on to the people's business with the recommendations of the Planning and Development Committee uh, with Councillor Chair Rex Hillier. Uh, yes, Your Worship. These are uh, recommendations brought forward from our February 27th uh, committee meeting. Uh, number 6A, Seal Cove, 193 Seal Cove Road. 
Be it so resolved that in accordance with Council's authority at subsections 4.92 and 4 of the Town's Development Regulations, application number 2478 received January 17th, 2023 for a 231.9 square meter accessory building at 193 Seal Cove Road be deferred pending completion of a floodplain mapping for Billy Brook. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler, discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship. We know that there's been some flooding in that area uh, over time, and we want to have a, a look at it before we uh, approve any development in that area. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Number 6B, be it so resolved that the Lawrence Pond Stormwater Management Plan be re report be adopted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Hardy, discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship. This is a study that we've undertaken of the uh, drainage basin for the Upper Gullies, the Upper Gullies River, which uh, drains uh, out of Lawrence Pond. It's looked at, uh, looks at how much water is carried in the basin, how much water is carried in the river. Uh, properties, there are 68 properties that this river passes as it goes uh, to Conception Bay. So it looks at uh, the impact that uh, uh, the water has on those properties, looks at the culverts, culvert size, and so on. And then, of course, provides recommendations uh, moving forward. So this, and once we accept this, this will be a plan moving forward, management plan that uh, we will be following as we uh, as we move forward. Uh, we a moment ago we passed or we we passed a recommendation uh, regarding uh, a uh, property in Seal Cove because we're going to look at a management plan at Billy Brook. This is what the Billy Brook management plan will look like this time. It's uh, this one's for for the Upper Gullies River and Lawrence Pond. Yeah, I see there, I think there's three major recommendations that come out of that for upgrades for uh, culverts. And then there's a, a number of others as well. So it gives us a, a clear view on the situation there and uh, and things that can happen and we have to look at going forward for sure. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Number 6C, be it so resolved that under the authority of Section 16 of the Urban Rural Planning Act 2000, Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment number 23, uh, 2023, and Development Regulations Amendment number 41, 2021, be adopted. Uh, and further, be it so resolved that under authority of Section 19 of the Ur Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Mr. Stephen B. Jepchek, FCIP, be appointed as commissioner to hold a public hearing and complete a report respecting municipal plan. Amendment number 23, 2023, and Development Regulations Amendment number 41, 2023. And further, be it so resolved at a public hearing regarding Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment number 23, 2023, and Development Regulations Amendment number 41, 2023, be held at 7 p.m. on April 12, 2023, at the Town Hall, and that should the Town receive no written submissions up to two days prior to the scheduled date, the public hearing will be cancelled. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett, discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship. That's a bit of a long-winded recommendation. But basically what this refers to is uh, a rezone, rezoning process that we've been working through at 240 to 258 Anchorage Road. Uh, we've asked for and received <clears throat> written re reports followed up by Resident Information Center uh, session. Uh, the province has had a look at the proposal with no concerns and having taken into account the, the comments of residents and the, the province, we're now bringing uh, this forward for a vote. Uh, the motion goes on. So really what we're doing, we're, we're recommending acceptance of the amendments and then goes on to say that if this should be passed, uh, we are recommending a meeting, a public meeting be held by an independent commissioner on April 12th. Yeah, and that'll give uh, anyone who has uh, anything to say about that and concerns and so forth the opportunity to do, to, do so. And I understand this is part of a, a process that'll 
it's not it's not wrapped up in in short order, but it is a process that we will follow to allow people to comment on what's happening here tonight. Yes, Your Worship, this is a, a process set down by provincial legislation, and really we're we're working our way through uh, through that process. Any further comment? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Uh, 60, 1216 Rideouts Road. Be it so resolved that the terms of reference for a land use impact assessment report regarding proposed rezoning and development of a multi story apartment building at 12 to 16 Rideouts Road be approved as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Goss. Discussion. Uh, yes, Your Worship. This is another project that we have been uh, we've been working our way through with with the developer. Uh, basically, we're it's looking to rezone a property to accommodate uh, the development of a, a rather large apartment uh, facility with up to sixty plus apartments uh, in the area of Kitty H Turnoff, Rideouts Road, Brayside Place. Uh, part of the process we were we were asking for is is a land use impact assessment report. And tonight we're uh, we're uh, recommending acceptance of the terms of reference. And the terms of reference includes the proponent uh, doing studies, uh, providing us with information with things such as sewer capacity, uh, flood risk analysis, uh, stormwater discharge plan, uh, traffic imp impact in the area, noise, and so on. So it's a rather large document that we will be, that the proponent will be undertake, undertaking. And I guess at some point when it's completed, we'll be using it to uh, uh, use it for our decision-making process as to whether or not this will go to another level. Yeah, lots of lots of questions answered in the in the report uh, that we'll need in making a decision. And a lot of those questions are questions that residents will be asking in the area as well. So we'll get have the uh, report from them on that before uh, we move forward. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? All right. Contrary minded? Carried. And finally, your worship to the uh, committee report. Be it so resolved that decisions and recommendations made at the Planning and Development Committee meeting on February 27th, 2023 be accepted as presented and the topics discussed were uh, listed below. Seconder. Councillor Connors, discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship, these were, as you see, there are other topics that we discussed at the meeting, but didn't require a recommendation to be brought forward at this point in time. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Your Worship, that's, uh, that's it from planning. All right, thank you, uh, Councillor Hillier. Recommendations of Engineering and Public Works Committee Chair, Councillor Melissa Hardy. Thank you, Mayor Bent. 7A, approval to award 23-07. Be it so resolved that approval is given to award tender 23-07, purchase of three new and unused 2023 or newer quarter ton regular cab 4x4 pickups to Hickman Motors Limited at a cost of $73,171 plus HGST per unit and funds are available in the account as presented. Um, uh, seconder, Councillor Tilly, discussion. All in favor? Contrary minded, carried. Seconder, Councilor Hillier, discussion? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried? 7C, approval to award contract 2306. Be it so resolved that approval is given to award tender 2306, purchase of two new and unused 2023 or newer quarter ton or half ton regular cab 
four by four pickups to Hickman Motors Limited at a cost of $53,240 plus HST per unit and funds are available in the account as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Butler, discussion? Um, the three contracts that I just spoke to are all part of the light duty truck awards and is just to uh, replace our existing aging fleet. Yeah, and I assume some of these, Councillor Hardy, are replacing some that probably met their best day during COVID and could, we couldn't get vehicles at that time. Absolutely. So we're finally yeah. moving forward on some of them. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Okay, 7D, approval to tender mineral road uh, upgrade. Be it so resolved that approval is given to tender at the mineral roads upgrade project, so moved. Seconder. Councilor Barrett, discussion. So we should understand that this project is will be similar to what we've done at uh, Lawrence Pond uh, and Fowler's Road, Legion Road as well, bringing Minerals Road up to that. Yes, the same standard, the traffic calming. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. Sounds like a nice project. Yes, and I just wanted to add that I'm so glad this is on the agenda, and uh, I'm sure the residents will be pleased to get improvements there. And I believe the improvements include sidewalk. Yes, yes. so yeah. that's even that that adds to it. Thank you, Councillor Hardy, for that. Any other discussion? Yeah, so this is the last major connector from Route 60 to Peacekeepers Way. So we're glad to get this tender out and get it done, and then all the major connectors will be up to. Uh, a really great standard. Um, okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. All right, 7E, approval to purchase ratification of Concord Drive, lift station, rotating assembly. Be it so resolved that a ratification approval is given to purchase a pump rotating assemblies for Concord Drive lift station from Samson Equipment Limited at a cost of $23,591.32 plus HST and funds are available in the account as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Connors, discussion? Uh, and this here again is just part of the town's ongoing maintenance for the san uh, sanitary sewer infrastructure we have. There's always money to spend on lift stations, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. All right, 7F, uh, Yard Waste Collection Program. Be it so resolved that the Yard Waste Collection Program be adopted as presented, so moved. Seconder. Councilor Morris, discussion? Uh, yes, uh, um, this program will provide the curbside collection uh, for the yard waste for the spring and fall at no additional cost or appointments necessary for the residents. And um, if you just want to stay tuned to the town's website, because those dates will be posted uh, very soon. Okay. And uh, this is uh, biodegradable waste, I guess. This is just leaves and branches and that sort of thing. It's not, it's not garbage. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I know that we'll, for anybody that's wondering uh, about our bulk garbage program, that'll be coming soon, I guess. Uh, coming a little later, yeah. Uh, so, uh, because I called yesterday to try and book one for May, and of course, they weren't taking booking yet. So, for anybody that's looking, they told me sometime in March, uh, later on in March. So, anyway, we'll see. Uh, any other comments on waste collection? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. And just one. Um... Last general reminder before I read our um, just our regular blanket statement. Um, there's no change to the waste collection that's happening next um, next week during St. Patty's Day. Um, so everyone will have their waste collection picked up. And a reminder that the winter parking ban is still in effect on street and is not permitted during overnight hours. So crews are still out working 24 hours a day, clearing, removing snow for street widening, sidewalks, and for the water and sewer infrastructure. And now that it is a little bit um, milder today, just ensure that everyone's fire hydrants are safely cleared out now that you can move the snow. <laughs> so our blanket uh, recommendation from our committee meeting, be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions made at the Engineering and Public Works Committee held on Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, be accepted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Hillier, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hardy. 
Recommendations of the Recreation and Leisure Services Committee, Chair Councillor Shelley Moores. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bent. Uh, we just have a blanket statement uh, for this uh, council meet or committee meeting, but I did want to mention a couple of things. I wanted to mention that the um, Youth Volunteer and Citizen of the Year nominations are now open and the deadline is March 7th. And also the Senior St. Patrick's Day Social, which you referenced earlier, is March 16th. And one other thing I wanted to talk about was our community park ice service. So I know it may be very tempting to play hockey and sports like that on the rink that we have, but I just want to remind all residents that it's meant for skating only. Um, and mainly this is, you know, due to safety of everyone that wants to use it and make it a safe place for people to skate. So I really encourage and ask all residents to follow the rules and please refrain from playing hockey, as tempting as it may be. Um, there's other places that that can be done and ice surface is not for that. Um, so be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions of the Recreation and Leisure Service Committee meeting of February 28th, 2023 be accepted as presented, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Tilly, discussion? Uh, Councillor Moores, this coming Thursday, uh, are we not honoring our athletes in the Yes, town? I had that written down too. Yes, so another exciting thing on Thursday, we have our sports award ceremony. So it's going to be very exciting to see all the athletes that we have in Conception Bay South get recognized for their outstanding abilities. So I'm not sure how many of us are going, but I'm sure it's going to be a great event. If I, if sorry, if I could just add on one one thing Councillor Moore said, uh, just with respect to the community ice, um, as I noted last meeting, is I think it's very exciting, and as Councillor Tilly mentioned earlier this evening as well, we're getting a lot of positive uh, feedback on the ice and and the um, the playground. You know, I was there last week trying to teach my three year old daughter how to skate. You know, and that's really exciting for us, but also being mindful of the multi-use demographics and, and audience that the ice surface uses. And, and really as of late, there has been a lot of increased activity on the ice surface with respect to hockey. And so uh, I just wanted to um, support your um, um, stance on the council wars, because I think it's an important reminder for us all. Any other discussion? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Thank you. Recommendations of Financial and Administrative Services Committee Chair, Deputy Mayor Andrea Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, these are just three recommendations that we're bringing forward. Uh, we didn't actually have a committee meeting, but we do have to pay bills. So uh, the recommendations of the Financial Administrative Services Committee are as follows. 9A, manual checks. Be it so resolved that approval be given to ratify the payment of manual checks totaling $335,914.07. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Next item 9B, accounts payable invoices. Be it, so, be it so resolved that approval be given for the payment of accounts payable invoices totaling $231,654.83 as per the attached listing. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Connors, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. And 9C, capital invoice approval. Be it so resolved that approval be given to pay capital invoices totaling $63,279.09 as per the attached listing. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Hardy, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. And that is it from the uh, Finance and Administrative services committee. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Goss. Uh, we didn't have a economic uh, development uh, committee meeting this past week. So the next thing on the agenda is other committee reports. And I think Councillor Butler, you have at least one thing. Yes, I have the one. Yes. On February 23rd, third, the town town CBS Board of Management gathered for its board meeting and annual planning session. Board members reviewed initiatives from 2022 and worked towards the creation of a work plan for 2023. 
The board continues to focus on attracting shoppers, customers, clients, and visitors to the downtown area and Conception Bay South as a whole. And we'll be focusing their efforts in 2023 on marketing and promotion, beautification, support and promotion of events, communication with members and community investment. And of course, while they're doing this, they'll be incorporating the town's 50th anniversary where they can possibly do so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Uh, anyone else with uh, committee reports from outside of uh, regular council committee? Okay, well, that's it then. Um, so we are back here in two weeks time on March 21st. And in the meantime, clocks will change this weekend. It'll be the first day of spring when we get back. So it'll be sunny and all the snow will be gone. It'll be fantastic. So welcome everybody back then. Can I have a motion for adjournment? Councillor Tilly, seconded by Councillor Barrett. All in favor? Contrary minded. Thank you.